I don't know about you, but whenever I'm about to enter a battle in any game, especially a boss fight, I check everything on my character. My gear, my items, boosts, equipment, anything and everything I will need, even backups, just in case I run out of something. I don't play games when it comes to games. <laughs> I have to be ready with the best of what I have and strategize even before the fight starts. Then, and only then, do I fight. Luckily, it's only a game, so when I die, I respawn, I reload, I try again. If only life was like this, yeah? Reset, reload, retry. It's not. We face battles every day and we don't get the luxury of respawning or restarting. I don't know about you, but sometimes I feel completely unprepared for life's curveballs. 2020 caught me off guard, for sure. Can you relate to any of this? Well, Paul in the Bible could. He couldn't relate to my intense preparedness before entering a battle royale as if he had some potato computer playing Fortnite on it. <laughs> no. He could relate to the real battles we face every day and knew the dangers of being caught off guard. That is why he wrote this letter to the early church in Ephesus. He knew that their flimsy bodies needed to be geared up correctly so that they can be prepared to face the battle of real life in the right way, dressed up with the right gear. So today we are starting a new devotional series called Spiritual Royale. We will look at Ephesians 6, 10 to 20, the armor of God. Now in this introduction today, it is actually important to understand the context of this letter. Paul wrote the book of Ephesians as a sort of circular letter. It was sent around to the churches in the area. Paul taught them about peace and unity in Christ and with one another. He taught them about their identity and how they must behave as Christians. He also, and this is actually where we pick up the text, taught them how to stand together against a common enemy. Now, after he teaches them how to live as Christians, he gives them final instructions. Finally, he says in verse 10, Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of His might. This is so important and sets us up for the rest of the text. The subject of strength is repeated here. Paul mentions it earlier in Ephesians 3 verse 16. It's not an outward physical strength, but rather a strength from within. Take note that Paul says, Be strong in the Lord and in His might, mighty power. God never intended them to rely on themselves. It was all in his strength. He did not want them to train like Roman soldiers to physically overpower the enemy, but rather called them to find strength in the Lord, to draw on him instead of themselves. That was the first thing. Then he goes on to say in verse 11, put on the full armor of God so that you can take a stand against the devil's schemes. Here Paul calls out the devil, singles him out as the leader of the opposing force. You see, the devil was in the business of causing them to mess up. And what does that look like? We see this in the previous chapters. Paul urged them not to sin in their anger, not to get drunk as it leads to wickedness, not to be sexually immoral, not to be greedy, bitter or insult one another. See, the spiritual attacks from the devil made them mess up in all the areas of their lives. This is why in Paul, in verse 10, he says, For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. See, that is what the armor protects them from. He realizes that there is something far more dangerous than physical attacks, and that's spiritual warfare. Paul uses all these different terms in verse 12 to show how crafty the devil is, how diverse his power is, and that he is full of schemes and plans to attack. 
This is what the Ephesian church need to prepare against and what they needed to fight against. But how do one protect yourself from something you can't see, from an invisible enemy? I can imagine them asking that question. <laughs> I mean, I would. And this is what Paul makes clear in verse 13. Put on the full armor of God so that when the day of evil comes, you may be able to stand your ground. See, notice two things. He says, when it comes, it's not about if, but when. And also he says, put on the full armor, not just a piece. <laughs> I mean, what soldier goes into war with just a helmet and his underpants or just a shield and no weapon. I mean, one with a death wish, I'm sure. Only when they wore the full set of armor given to them by God, could they stand when the attacks came. But what about us? See, notice how Paul says in verse 12, for our struggle, this text is not just for the Ephesian church or for the early church to put on specific armor, to be well equipped to stand up against these assaults that will come their way. <laughs> no, this is for us too, even for Paul. We are all in this together, all believers, united even across generations. Even today, the devil continues in his business of causing us to mess up. He started with Adam and will relentlessly keep on going until the end. In fact, the devil has a plan for every scenario, a strategy for every situation. And I love how John Piper puts it. He says, the devil has methods. He has books for every situation, tailor-made for every class of people and for your situation. Therefore, you can't really say, oh, but if only this or that would change, then I would be free from his scheming ways. <laughs> no, no, no. Think again. Are you poor? He's got a strategy for that. You become rich? No problem. He switches off or he changes his strategy easy. He will attack you even there. Maybe you're single. Maybe you're in a right. Maybe you are in a relationship. He has a strategy for all of that too. Honestly, he doesn't care. He is and always will be in the business of causing you to mess up. Perverting good things, corrupting your heart and driving you further away from God. You know, in reality, we shouldn't be surprised when we are attacked by him, falling into temptation as if something strange is happening to us. We should not be taken back and think, why is God doing all of this to me? Why is he allowing this to happen to me? Or we shouldn't be feeling hopeless saying, oh no, what's the point? I can't escape sin anyway. No, instead, we should be gearing up and ready for it. I mean, it would be absolutely ridiculous to start a fight in any game without the proper gear. How much more should we not be prepared in real life where there's no respawn? We get a fair warning to be ready. God even gives us, gives us the gear to prepare. It's all found in his word, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, feet fitted, ready, the, uh, feet fitted with the readiness that comes from the gospel, the shield of faith, the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit. In the following weeks, we will look at how we gear ourselves up with the full armor of God. But for now, I want to ask you, are you fit to fight? Are you ready to stand against the devil's attacks? Remember this, none of us are exempted. It's not if it will happen, but when. We must be fully prepared with all the gear and most importantly, by doing so, we are strengthened internally by God to stand our ground, fight and overcome. So Paul repeats this word stand because that's his goal. He wants us to stand and not be defeated. God includes us in his kingdom plan and wants us to participate in his victory. When you're in battle and the dust settles, he wants you to be the last man standing to win the spiritual royale against the devil and 
all his forces. We must not forget the context in which this is taught. Remember verse 10? The ESV actually puts it this way. Be strong in the Lord and in the strength of his might. Even when we wear the armor, our power comes not from trying harder. It only, it's only found in the Lord. His strength enables you to fight and overcome. So now you've been given a heads up. If you answered no or I don't know when I asked, are you ready to fight? Then I want to challenge you to come back next week and learn how to gear up. But in closing, I just, I just want to encourage you. If you are anything like me and you've been caught off guard by the devil before, not ready at all. If you've been hurt or injured by evil, especially the things around you, or jumped headfirst into temptation, not all is lost. We may at times lose the battle, but the war has already been won for us. See, Christ overcame and defeated the very heart of evil and saved us from its ultimate consequence. We may not be able to experience the full victory today, but one day we will. One day, every tear will be wiped away and every wound will be healed up. But for now, until that day comes, let us stand united. Pick one another up. Learn how to put on the armor and fight together in the strength that comes from God. Until victory. Thank you, and I'll see you next week, God willing.